The following video might make you subscribe. So, Harbor Master, Catanians, this is it. I loaded in a game of Harbor Master on the updated Catan Universe app. It's not vastly updated, but it's updated uh, just enough to keep things you know fresh, keep things new, make you want to play more matches, which is exactly what I'm doing. So this is a very, very good board. There's a lot, a lot of options. And this one was actually a close game most of the way through. Now, blue is going to take a very good spot to start out with. This 9 wood, 5 or 6 sheep. All around good numbers. Very good resource diversity. Now, I got to go second, which second or third is my preferred turn to go in when placing the starting initial settlements. And I actually am going to go for the 9 wheat, the 4 brick, and the 3 sheep. Now hear me out. There was a better spot, I think. It could have been the 8 or 10 or 3 wheat to promote building cities and all that. You see red takes the 8 or 10 or 5 wood instead with the wheat port down below them. But I would have taken that with the 3 wheat instead and tried to get down to that wheat port. But... Going on that spot that I'm talking about with the three wheat, the eight or ten or, then pointing a road t down towards that wheat port, I was almost certain that another person was going to just put a settlement right on that eight or five wood with the wheat port and just nullify that strategy completely. So that's why I went with a slightly different approach to this game. I didn't go for the best numbers. I went for a position that would kind of block out anyone wanting to build on the 8 wheat at, top, at the top of your screen. Now red does go ahead and build on it with the 4 brick and smartly points a road over to the 3 for 1 port. Which is a very, very good play. I thought that red was actually going to go for a different spot over more towards the bottom left of your screen where there's some wheat and sheep that they're not built on. And... Brick is not really good on this board, so I understand why they went for the 4 brick, because your only other options for brick are a 2 and a 12, and we all know how little those get rolled. So very smart on their part. Now, my second settlement, I was like, you know what, I just need to get the other two resources and not be quite worried about, you know, building on that 8 ore, which I really really wanted to do so I instead I took the five ore and the ten wood up near the top left of your screen so I actually don't have a six or an eight for my starting settlements that I'm built on but my strategy this game was to fly under the radar as best as I could I don't want the robber put on me it you know at all if I can help it but very very little do I want the robber put on me with these kind of numbers? And I was expecting the robber to be put more on the sixes and eights like they usually are. And you'll see red being built on eight or an eight wheat, you know every other player is going to start targeting them because they're getting a ore and a wheat off of an eight every time. And once they start upgrading those settlements into cities, then they could potentially get a city off of an eight. They could automatically get three or and two wheat but we'll see what happens later down the line now purple went ahead and challenged me at we're going to fight for this position over on the right side of your screen they built on that nine wheat six sheep two brick and they point the road to challenge me to that next intersection so i was really trying to get a road as fast as i could and thankfully i got it now purple ends up leaving the game but they were willing to trade me the brick for one of their ore. So I don't know if they hit that check mark on accident, but I traded with red because I purple was my competition. But I didn't realize that they had also accepted the trade, but then they just they just left anyways because they probably knew at that point it was uh going to be a, a goner of a game for them because their other settlement is smack dab in the middle of the board. They're on a good spot with the 5 or 4 brick 11 wood, but if they can't get themselves out of there with some roads, they might be boxed in the whole game. And remember, we're playing the Harbor Master scenario, so they're not really set up 
to get on the, some good ports because they're not really near any ports. There aren't, they are near the stone port, but that's what I'm going for. So I'm hoping I could get on the stone port before they do. And funnily enough, because I stole a card from purple earlier, the computer decided to shut me down first with the robber. I'm on a 10 wood with only one settlement. You would think that the AI would shut down an eight or a six before they shut my 10 down. But I think at this point, it was right before Red built a city on the eight eight ore. So maybe they, at the beginning of the game, when everyone just has two victory points, maybe the AI doesn't really target anyone specifically. It's just kind of random or who knows. I'm just, I'm just trying to think out loud for that point. But you'll see later on, the AI will exclusively shut down the hot spots, which, as we know, are going to be on the eights. Because the sixes are also hot, but they're only sheep so it's not that good of a resource i think the your best resources and if you're going to rank them would be wheat then ore then wood and brick and then sheep all maybe all maybe those are all tied for third but wheat is definitely at the top followed by ore at number two that's just my personal opinion on that one so i did end up cutting off purple so now i was in a prime position to build on the three sheep six sheep but I was like, let me just build one more road to the stone port, gain the six in my inventory of different numbers, and also get a port because we are playing Harbor Master. So I want to get three ports, or I want to get two ports with a city on one of the ports and grab those two extra victory points because we are playing to an 11 victory point game, not just 10. Now let me call your attention back over to my other starting settlement. I'm on the 5 ore, I'm on the 10 wood, and then the desert hex. I could have placed it on the 9 wood, 12 brick with the 3 for 1 port to start off with the 3 for 1 port. But I valued 5s being rolled more to get ore rather than trying to trade for it later down the road. I also valued it more than the eight or three wheat for sheep spot because I would not get any wood out of that and I also would not be on a port and I'd be fighting red for that wheat port down at the body of your screen which is currently blocked by my victory point card that I drew and a night card that I drew and blue goes ahead and puts a road now they're going to fight me on the on that other front over to the nine wood ten wood so I'm like you know what I also have to get a road really quickly to stop that from happening because this is kind of my whole strategy to get on to the stone port on the right side, but also I'm, I'm battling, I'm playing a, or I'm hosting a battle on two, on two different fronts because on the left side, I also want to either get over to the three for one port or the sheep port because knowing after I get on that stone port, I'll have a three and a six bringing sheep in. So I also, ideally, I want to go on that sheep port, maybe just a little bit more than a three for one port. And red is going to go for the three for one port. Very smartly so. I think that was the better choice instead of building to the wheat port first because of where they place their initial settlement. If they had had it just one tick over, like I said, on that three wheat, eight or ten or then it would have made sense to go directly for that wheat port as soon as possible to gain the five wood. But they already have the five wood. So they are doing really well. And again, because I'm not built on sixes or eights, I think I'm not going to get shut down a whole lot this game. You know, the A, I did shut down the ten wood initially. But people are starting to upgrade in the cities already. They're, they're doing better than me initially. Although we're all at three victory points, they some of the other players I felt had better momentum than I did. I was trying to get my whole strategy set up here. So I want to I eventually want to take Harbor Master. I'm not too certain about Longish Road, but Harbor Master and because of the way the game was going with the dice rolls, I was getting a lot of just like a single sheep, single wheat, and a single ore. So I was like, man, I can't be holding on to these in case I lose them off the robber being placed on me because the, I mean there there is always that chance that someone is following along with the roles like oh green got this resource off of this role this color they got res that resource off of that role so they could go ahead and steal from me anytime off of seven or play a knight of their own 
So just the way the game was going, I needed some some sort of my momentum on my own. So I was like, let me just build some development cards. Thankfully, I did draw that victory point card initially, and then I drew a knight. So I'm like, you know what? It may be possible I should start thinking about largest army at this point. You know, long term, maybe in the second half of the game, if I can grab that and hold on to it, I can keep those two victory points from another player who's potentially also trying to get to it. To the largest army yeah but yeah longest road i mean it's possible but because of how the game is going with the dice rolls i'm not really getting a whole lot of brick and wood and i really want to funnel that into just getting on that stone port that's like my main objective right now and the threes were actually rolling pretty well so sheep was coming in although it's not the most important resource for me it was certainly helpful in being able to build these development cards early on and another thing purple left the game right the the actual player they quit or they got kicked kicked out or who knows what happened their connection was poor but their ai is doing not bad usually they the ai lags behind the rest of the players but the ai built an built a city built another settlement on the board they have a three-length road, and they have all that open area down to the bottom left of your screen to just build some more roads and immediately take Longest Road upon expanding. They've also played a knight, so they, they have one knight played, two knights away from Largest Army. So I was like, wow, usually I want to just eyeball an actual player because those usually do better than the computer's. But purple was actually doing really well. They also have really good number diversity from the actual human player that set them up. They have a two. Um, well, now with the help of the AI, they have a three, a four, five, six, nine, and 11. So that's pretty darn good. The only thing they're really missing that's noteworthy is an eight. That would be really good for them. And a, and a 10, of course. But it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get on a 10 because that 10 or with the two settlements with the one settlement and the one city that's on it because they're at the complete opposite end of each other on the hex no one else can now get on that 10 or so that's another thing you got to think about when playing with four players on the basic katan board the certain resources can be taken by just two players because of the way they place their starting settlements and that'll be it for any hope of any other player getting that resource for the rest of the game so the board can get pretty crowded, and you can run out of room pretty quickly with four players on this board. But I am also looking at red and seeing what, they're, what they have going on. They don't have the best number diversity, but those eights are just so powerful. You see that eight weed is shut down because, like I said, the weed has got to be the most valuable resource. And having it shut down is good for all the rest of us. And look at that. They go ahead and they smartly upgrade that settlement on the port to a city. Because again, in Harbor Master, if you have three settlements on ports or one city and one settlement, you get that Harbor Master extra two victory points. So I see why they did that instead of putting the city on the four brick eight wheat. Now, they did down at the bottom of your screen upgrade their settlement on the eight or ten or five wood into a city and that totally makes sense to get a bunch of ore coming in along with their wheat to just exponentially get more cities it, it just it just happens faster when you have a city like on a on a very good uh, spot like that and what else do we have i did cut off blue so now i could potentially build on that nine wood ten wood but again it's not going to be as valuable to me as simply building on either the three for one port on the nine wood or the ten wood with the sheep port i did want to do both spots but i still have not built my settlement on that stone port to gain the six sheep as well and i'm at a wood and a sheep i just need two more resources i need a four and a nine to be rolled of course a seven gets rolled on blue's turn meaning that i will not beginning a settlement on my turn because I can, I only have one roll. I could either roll one or the other or I could probably not roll any of them at all because of the dice rolls in this game. They're all over the place. 
I could roll an 11, and purple would get three wood, which is crazy. That 11 that's smack dab in the middle of the board. And blue shuts me down out of spite, I think. I think sometimes you got to detention your emotions from this game because blue shuts me down because I cut them off. I understand why they did it. And then they go ahead and switch gears and start to build. And then they just go ahead and build on that three for one port. So that's good for them. But now is not the time to let your emotions get in the way. So I have to use my knight, get the robber off my 10 wood, place it back where it should be on that eight wheat. I mean, if he rolls a 7, put it on the 8 or, because the 8s, we know in in combination with each other, in unison, that is a force to be reckoned with. So we really don't want that to be happening. And I did make a slight mistake. I was like, you know what, I, I really need a resource card. And red did not have any on this turn. Neither did blue, so I stole from purple instead on the 11. But thankfully a 5 gets rolled instead of an 8. So if we can get through this next part, and thankfully purple comes in clutch, they have a knight of their own, and they place it right back on that eight wheat. A six gets rolled, I'm still not benefiting from it because I'm still not quite built on that, but I'm really hoping I can get built on that this upcoming turn. I don't have a stone port, or an ore port, I should say. I do have two ore that I could have traded in a two, four, and eight, but I don't quite, I'm not quite there yet more sheep is getting rolled i still am not built on that i'm waiting for a four or a nine because blue did not roll four or nine i'm still not going to get my settlement this go around but i am going to roll seven so hopefully i can draw a good card from red when i place it on their eight or i draw another wood so i, I still just don't quite have what i need and when I saw that purple, the AI, was willing to trade, I, you always ask for one more card than they're willing to offer. And they almost always give it to you. If they have it, they'll give it to you. If they don't have it, they won't. So that's kind of the rule of thumb in the in Katan universe, at least. So I grabbed two more ore to have a total of four. So now I can four for one it if I get a brick or a wheat by the time my turn rolls around. I've been waiting now for a couple turns just to get a 4 or 9 to be rolled. And that is the story of my life at Gatan. Every time I just need just like one resource, it takes forever for that to happen. But for other players, it seems like the wind just blows their way. I, I really don't know. Maybe that's just my luck, or maybe I should have built on different starting settlement placements. Who knows? But another 7 is rolled. Hopefully blue instead of... Shutting me down again out of spite. Thank you. He puts it on red on the eight wheat. Because that's too hot of a spot. Eight Red would be getting... And look, there goes an eight roll. I rolled it. So red would have gotten two ore and three wheat. The opposite of what you need for a city, but still. Five cards. Thankfully, we held them back to just getting two cards. And I think shutting those down, you know, back and forth throughout the whole game was really instrumental in keeping Red from like just blazing past us in victory points and winning the game really quickly. This was a, you kind of had to sit in and, you know, get down and dirty. This was a long game to be played, almost 40 minutes. And because of us shutting down Red on those uh, two big spots, that's why the game was so long and drawn out. So we could have a chance to come back and catch up and hopefully steal the win away from Red, because it looks like, at this point, Red has the best chance of winning. And, of course, when Red plays a 7, they get to choose to place the robber on, on the 5, which is on everyone else is built on that 5. And, of course, they do steal from Blue, which is good. Again, I'm flying under the radar because I'm in dead last with my victory points. I have just 3. So if I can kind of keep this uh, low-key uh, play style up, I may be able to come back later in the game. Because I do, I'm holding on to my victory point. I have played a knight. I have uh, some things in the workings for long term. And here we go, a nine is rolled. I finally grab a wheat. And no, I don't have that trade for purple, a wheat for a brick. Because I never ever get brick when I need it, when I absolutely need it. But there is a chance blue could roll it, or I could roll it. But either way, I will four for one, that or if I need to. 
Blue plays a knight. And okay, blue is kind of back off from uh, thinking about placing it on me. And eight is rolled, even, so it, thankfully that eight wheat was shut down. Red gets two ore instead of five cards. Everybody's happy so far. And now it's back to me. If I can roll a four, that'll be a better. I roll a eight, so it looks like I am four for wanting my ore. And take note that I had eight cards in my hand, so I, fo I thought I was going to roll a seven and still be waiting a way longer to get my settlement on that ore port. And no one wanted to trade, so I do have to four for one. But now I'm on the six sheep, I'm on the ore port. Now we can start my next phase of my strategy where it's either going to be a city or some development cards or getting on that sheep port because blue got the three for one port away from me. I really won that spot, but I can't have it. So I do want to get on that sheep port because now sixes have been rolled a lot early in the game. Now we're kind of at the halfway point. If sixes can continue to be rolled a lot, then I'm going to benefit from all the sheep coming in and then I can doubly benefit if I can get on that sheep port. So we're going to see what's going to happen. I'm sitting here with just two resource cards. I have a wood and a sheep and I'm just I'm just hoping for the rolls to start really picking up because I have a three, a four, five, a six, a nine, and a ten. It is hopeful that I could be on an eight but at this point it doesn't look like it's going to happen because that eight wheat is my only, you know, realistic option. And I need one, two, three, four roads to get on that last available spot for that eight wheat. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to take way too long. By the time I get there, another player would probably win the game by then. The only thing I could really hope for is a road building card from the development pile stack. Also kind of a long stretch. But at this point, because from that five, I do get a second ore. I have two wheat, but blue has to go and just put a real wrench in my strategy. Now they've built on that spot that I was trying to, you know, keep going off of up to the sheep port. They didn't take the sheep port. The sheep port's still available to be taken, but they have kind of really screwed me over because now I have to build two more roads instead of one to get up to that sheep port if I was just able I, I mean actually I could have I could have traded my two ore for a brick and then cut them off but they could have still built on that spot because I didn't have a settlement there even if I did cut them off I was still had had to build one more road up to the sheep port which would have been less cards in the long run but I really really wanted a third ore because at this point I do only have three settlements on the board, zero cities, and I really wanted to have a city by now. So I was like, you know what? They didn't take the sheep port, and I still have a chance to get up there. Let me just try to go for the city because everyone else has cities on the board except for me, and I see how much it's benefiting them. So let me try to get one. And my basically, because it's Harbor Master, I'm going to throw that city on the six sheep with the ore port just for my long-term strategy of taking harbor master that's not going to promote me getting a lot of cards because ideally if you place a city on the intersection of three different resources and every time one of those different numbers is rolled you're getting double what you normally would have get that's the better option and look at that red ghost head throws their knight down or throws the robber down in the desert just to steal from me there was so many other good spots to place it on, but they uh, place it on the desert hex, and I get a resource taken away from me. So, wasn't really getting shut down a lot, and then you see purple is building down to the brick port, and they have a four length road so far. So if they build just one more road, they will tie blue for longest road. And for me, I just couldn't take Longest Road. It just wasn't feasible at this point because as soon as Purple builds on that brick port, I'm kind of boxed in on that side. And then up top, I could try to wiggle my way all the way over to the eight wheat to take Longest Road and get on that spot with a settlement. 
but that's kind of still, like I said, it's kind of a pipe dream. So I'm gonna stick with my long-term plan. At this point, I have three or one wheat. I don't have a wood port, so I can't do two for one on that. But I do get a four, I finally get a brick. So now I'm in a spot where I could get a, get my city and then start to build some roads up to the sheep port. And that kind of, it kind of came together right at this point. We're a little bit past halfway. And I'm like, I'm only at four victory points. Blue is at seven. Although blue is at seven, I don't think they have all the momentum. I think it's still with red because red is almost built on that wheat port, which my victory point card is blocking. But as soon as they place a settlement on that wheat port, they will gain Harbor Master because they already have a city on the three for one port. So they will go from five points, they will jump up to eight points off of that. And then they, their good numbers are just going to bring in a bunch, a bunch of resources. Blue, although is winning, I don't think they have the momentum because they, they're only built on one port. They only have a settlement on that port. So they really need to get down to that other three for one port with the 11 wheat and the 12 brick to think about having a chance. And they should have built one more road to take the sheep port, but because they didn't, I think that was a big mistake on their port, leaving it open for me to take or not building on it to begin with. Another eight is rolled. And again, we only let red have two cards instead of five. And here we go. Red build, I mean, blue builds a road down and it looks like they're gonna build their second road down to that three for one port. Although they already have one, we are playing Harbor Master, so why not have another one on their way to getting Harbor Master? I finally get just the right amount of cards on my roll turn. I roll a nine, I get a second wheat. And then just as I was thinking, I was able to do it. I built a city and I built a road. And now we're really getting my strategy going. I'm one uh, settlement away from getting a sheep port and potentially Harbor Master, although red might take it this turn because they have a bunch of cards, but they did roll a seven, so they had to burn some cards. And they put it down on blue on the nine because blue made that nine way too hot of a spot. Now everyone is looking at that, getting four wood off a single nine, and then red does what I was, was kind of hoping they wouldn't do. They take Harbor Master, so now they're at eight points. They have a lot of momentum. Purple goes ahead, places the settlement down on that brick port. So they have uh, one settlement on a port. So they're, you know, it's it's kind of a stretch for them to take Harbor Master, but anything's possible, right? And you see at this point, the board is getting pretty crowded. The only real open spots, the only real section of open board, I should say, is down on those eight or three wheat, 11 wheat, four sheep. And then blue blows my mind and just goes the other way they tr they instead are going to go down i think they might be going for the eight or three wheat four sheet spot i thought they were going to go for the three for one port but they i guess maybe eventually they're trying to connect up with their other settlement with that road and maybe secure longest road forever i don't know but i was like why do they go for that spot i, I get it's a better spot for resource production but this is Harbor Master. We're all about getting that spot. And then Red puts a road like they're going to try to challenge them for the spot. Because obviously that's Red's territory. They don't want anyone encroaching on them. And then Purple is like, let me get in on this. So it's a three-way battle to see who can get that spot. And I'm like, this is crazy. Who, who gets it might determine who wins the game, honestly. Because them three are kind of neck and neck. I mean, purple is behind at five victory points, but if they secure that spot and then keep building, they could take Longish Road, and that could be a three-point victory swing right there. And I'm just chilling at five. Again, I'm still under the radar. I do roll a seven. I was trying to roll a four or a ten so I could get one brick or one wood and then trade four of my five sheep in for the other resource I needed and hop on the sheep port, but no. And I, I had to trade... I had to shut down red but looking back on it i could have maybe shut down purple because they were trying if they get some momentum going they might overtake red's momentum and then really take off with this game and i got a sheep from red i was hoping to get a brick or a wood 
Now, I traded in for my sheet for a brick, anticipating a 10 being rolled instead of a 4. Of course, a 4 got rolled. And then look at this. Purple place road building takes longest road from blue, throws down a settlement, builds another road, blows everyone's mind. So I'm like, well, they've already done all that. So I'm going to take this trade of them giving me a fifth sheep for one of my brick so I can guarantee getting my settlement on my next turn. Then they just build another road. They're at eight victory points tied with red, and all of a sudden, they're about to get on that three-for-one port spot. And I'm just blown away at this point. How big of a swing can happen in, in Catan, even in just basic Catan, not even Cities and Knights, which is a whole other animal, a whole other beast. And I'm just like, wow, I now I need to really maybe change up my strategy because I was going to go for the sheep port and then maybe think about largest army but I actually have to flip flop my strategy I have played two knights at this point purple has also played two knights at this point we are neck and neck for who's going to take largest army one of us whoever plays a third knight is going to get it and I was like I I kind of I need to keep building stuff on the board for myself, but I also need to take larger army to keep it away from purple, because if I don't, we're gonna have a real problem. Purple's gonna be up at ten victory points, and then I'll be stuck at five, and they might just win the game. They might be holding onto a victory point card that I don't know about. So here is kind of my big mistake. My it no honestly it is I should have built a development card instead of building that settlement on the sheep port i had the cards to just well actually no i only had four sheep so maybe it's gonna be after this i believe but i should have played built a night card as soon as i could i should have had a largest army before this honestly at this point but that was my basically that's my big mistake as you see in the title of the video i should have already had largest army secured away that was the problem here because purple's at 10 victory points all of a sudden from stealing longest road, getting largest army, placing on that crucial eight or three wheat, four sheet spot that blue and red were also fighting for. And because they won out, they're, <laughs> they're about to win any turn now. And at this point, I'm, I'm at a good spot where I can start building a lot of development cards, but... Now, instead of just playing one knight to take Largest Army, I have to tie with purple for Largest Army and then build a fourth knight to take it away from him. And I don't know if I have that many turns left in the game to do that. But, honestly, if I can do that, I can pull purple back down to eight victory points, boost myself ahead to eight victory points, and you'll see. Red has Harbor Master, but they have not upgraded that settlement down on the eight ore on the wheat port to a city so they their harbor master is a uh, strength or power level three if you will mine is also power level three because i have a city on the ore port and a settlement on the sheep port if i can upgrade that settlement into a city on the sheep port i will take harbor master so at this point i realized if i take largest army i have to do that first because purple's about to win it's crazy the AI is about to beat all the human players. That never happens in my single-player games. And then I build a development card. It's a knight, thankfully. I'm like, okay, that's going to be my third knight. But I also have to build another one. I didn't have the cards to do so. I was left with three sheep and one wheat. Or one wood. But yeah, I was thinking if I can take Largest Army, then if I can take Harbor Master, I win. That's a five-point swing. How crazy is that, that you can have a five-point swing in a game of basic Catan? But, what do you know? Red upgrades to a city on that wheat port, so now their Harbor Master strength is, is strength four, and mine is still three. So in order to take Harbor Master, I would have to upgrade my settlement on the sheep port to a city, and then sneak over to that three-for-one port on the desert and take that as well, in order to take Harbor Master. So... It's not totally out of the ballpark in terms of uh, actually being able to pull it off. But it all comes down to taking this largest army. And of course I have to use my knight card. 
I go ahead and use it after I roll the dice because the robber was on the 11 wood and you see that purple would get three wood off an 11. And then I go ahead and I throw it down the eight and I take from purple because purple's the biggest threat at this point. And look at that. I could have built a road off to the three for one port and then put a settlement on there right now because I could trade two of my sheepmen for a brick and make it happen one road, one settlement. And then I would have had no cards left over after that. But I was like, as much as I want to do that, I have to do the right thing for the whole game to extend it longer, hopefully, and build a development card. And here's exactly what I'm going to do. I buy it. I hope for a night. I get a year of plenty. What a bummer. At this point, I'm like, man, now I have to go through another turn build another development card and then wait a turn after that to be able to play it but it's just about to be purple's turn and they have like more than seven cards and they don't roll a seven and now they have way more than seven cards they have 11 so all they have to do is trade in because you know they have that brick port and they just roll a four and what do you know they place down on the three for one port and they get themselves to 11 victory points and everyone else is done so. That's the game. There's the dice roll st statistics. Seven, of course, rolled the most. So there you guys have it. I should have taken Largest Army earlier in the game. And this game probably would have had a different outcome. I think it all came down to that one moment in time. Those couple turns, maybe a little bit past halfway through, when I, I could have built a third knight out of the development card pile and drew that one instead of purple drawing that one. And this would have been a totally different game, I think. Thank you guys for watching. I think this was a really good one. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.